weird singer woman behind the counter. Because traditionally, a barman is a man, which doesn't even make sense because they're supposed to be good at listening. And I'm excellent at listening, only because I need all your secrets because I love gossiping. Plus, what does Stevie love more than a brown woman cleaning? Our first act for tonight is David Cow. He is a giant in the stand-up comedy industry. Well, just in stand-up comedy though, we're actually the same height. How's it? My name is David Cow, and uh, I've, I've basically told everyone I will never ever do stand up without an audience. And uh, Kate Goliath calls and it's like, hey, I'm doing this thing. Comedy Central is doing this thing. With Savannah, it was a long fucking WhatsApp. I didn't really read. I just, you know, I kind of like scrammed through it and. Uh, then I saw the amount and I saw like 600 bucks and I was like, fuck it, I'll do it because that 600 rand more than I've made from comedy since March. So here I am uh, doing stand up with fuck all audience. I, I don't think you can do uh, stand up comedy without a live audience. First of all, uh, look, you kind of could, you sort of could. You know, back in the days, I did the original Fed Show show where there was no live audience. But back then, you could talk to the crew. You could talk to the camera guys, the sound guys. Today, there's a crew, but fuck, everyone is wearing a mask. I don't know if it's a cameraman or if it's John Flesmas. Nobody knows. You don't even know if the people are laughing or if they're dying from breathing their own carbon dioxide. Because <laughs> with the live audience, right, there's always, I mean, Always, without fail, any stand-up comedy show in the audience, probably front seat, there's always a fat guy. And I'm not trying to body shame. I'm not trying to, you know, uh, talk shit about overweight people. Don't be trying to fucking tweet and trend about bullshit. There's always a fat guy in the audience, okay? Or there's a fat guy in the audience wearing a leather jacket, okay? Or there's a fat guy with a hot chick. Or there's a fat guy and his fat friends. Always, in always in the front row. So you can always talk about, hey buddy, you are here again. <laughs> Fuck. Jason, you know I'm gonna do the same show, right? So uh, But you know we miss this shit, man. It's I guess it's kinda like the new normal, if you wanna call it that. Uh, now there's like levels to this shit. You know, you get those calls. Hi, can you do a comedy set uh, for there's a breakaway with uh, this company and they're doing. Uh, of course, everybody's at home. I'm like, fuck. Now I'm sitting at home looking into my laptop. You know, you are there killing yourself for like 30 minutes. And then in the 29th minute, your fucking two year old starts crying and then has to sit on your lap and then the feedback comes with oh my god oh you know when your child started crying and came into the shot oh, that was so beautiful that was so funny that was like the last one minute of a fucking 30 40 minute set and all you remember is this two-year-old that well my wife says is mine so i'm playing along since that's all I do these days. I mean, we used to perform for like 3,000, 4,000 people. I've done shows for 10,000 people. Now there's four people in my house. None of them are paying. Everyone is, is a comp. It's really gone to shit thanks to this COVID cack. I have to be honest, the biggest disconnection for me is even my Sangomas, now they also have to work online. So now Sangomas, traditional healers, everyone is working online now. Which is a bit tricky for those of you who don't understand how, how Sangomas or traditional healers work or ancestors. If you're trying to get in touch with uh, the underground gang is what they're called, like your elders. If you're trying to get in touch with them, you need to see a traditional healer or most people call them Sangomas. They have a direct line to your ancestors. But timing is important. So timing is very important because the Sangoma has to wait for the messages to come from the other side, from the underground gang. And then they kind of chill there. Yay! You know, you can tell when like 
their phones are vibrating. Right. When they're getting the messages, you know the messages are coming through. Some of them throw bones, some just know their oh. shit so well. They don't even throw bones anymore. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like having a manual being a song and, and no longer using the manual. So some would still throw bones. Directly then they throw the bones and they spread all over. And then they start analyzing what they are seeing. Uh, they tell you, oh yeah, look at that shell. Oh, look at that tire, it's where it's gone. Yeah, this thing here, I buy a lawyer here. Yeah, no, there's witchcraft here. This one, uh, hmm, hmm. there's always the woman next door or your best friend. Those are the first two suspects when shit is hitting the fan in your life. So now all this is happening online, on WhatsApp video calls, on Zoom. Not everyone has data, not everyone has high-speed internet. Sometimes the Sangomas or you are trying to connect, your ancestors are arriving, your data is shit because you are still on ADSL. So now the ancestors are trying to, you have no way of telling your ancestors, Uncle, I can see you, but I can't hear you. You are, you are on mute. I'm not, I'm not getting the messages. I'm, Imagine your Sangoma throwing in bones and then trying to show them to you with their phone camera on WhatsApp. Yeah, you see, you see the shell is upside down. The shell is upside. That's your marriage. That's it. Sorry, let me move. Let me move over here. Because now your wife is next to you. <laughs> Sit now. Let me move away. I'm just going to move to this side. Just... Yeah, you see the dice. The dice is far. It's away from everything else. But now you, you're no longer even looking at the Sangoma because they have their phone camera and they're trying to show you the bones. You see the dice. Yeah, it's away from everything. That's your money. <sighs> it's just too much. I can't. I can't do this shit. Some things have sort of remained the same. Not everything. And that's if ever you're stopped by a cop for whatever. It used to be for speeding. Now, if there's a curfew at 10 o'clock and you're being stopped by a cop, the chances are it's 5 past 10. But you don't have to go to jail. You don't necessarily have to go to jail. Uh, There's a way of getting out. You still have to give them a a drink, a drink. Just put something, put something. Uh, In fact, if you think they won't take cash because of COVID, they will drive you to an ATM. Or they just bring a speed point. It's just, fuck. Nothing is the same. Fuck all is the same anymore. Ah, fuck it. I can't do this shit. My name is David Carr. I think I've already invoiced, so (laughs) I'm done with this shit. Thanks, old Dave. And I mean that literally. He's ancient. Let's cross over to Parliament, where the only TikToker who isn't 12 years old, Ludes Lace, has something to say. on the agenda. The DM we received from Crash asking us to isolate with him this evening. We shall begin by reading the text. Hey, comma, do you wanna come over? No question mark. Okay. I open the matter to the floor. Uh, Honorable Common Sense has asked to speak first. Uh, please proceed. Thank you, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members. Firstly, I would like to request that we stop referring to Crash as a man. This is a <coughs> A man would not ask us to risk breaking curfew. If this boy was a man, he would have insisted that we isolate together before lockdown. These are the actions of a boy. Honorable members, not a man. Ha, 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 no, 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 no. Point of order, point of order. Yes, honorable heart. It's deplorable behavior to suggest stripping this boy of his masculinity just because he's a little bit scared of falling in love, eh? You know? That's because he's a boy. Chen, Honorable Hat is not qualified to speak on these matters. She has consistently provided nothing but irrational excuses for this <laughs> Listen here, okay? Common sense is being mean. Just because he was right about all the other crushes breaking me, doesn't mean he's right now. But that's the problem. That's why this boy has driven you to eating ice cream at midnight on a Tuesday. Listening to Taylor Swift. It's grotesque. You are weak to boys, you. I have something to add. I have something to add. How? Who has allowed a drug addict into our proceedings? Hey, hey, 
That's comrade vagina. That is not a drug addict chair, that is a thirsty bitch. I would like to add that Crush has provided great satisfaction in our last meetings. Even Honorable Spinal Cord was shocked. <gasps> that was supposed to be a secret. I just want to further insist that Crush is capable of so much. I agree with Honorable Vagina. Crush cares for us. Something that common sense will never understand. But when are you two together, you are always ganging up on me. Same words are group. You touch one, you touch the other. I take <laughs> We are organs. What are you? We're tangible. You're a concept. Where do they even teach about human biology, bruh? request seriously, we should ask if he has food. <laughs> Are you crazy? You can't even handle your cheese and almost fight your flagellants on one side and deal with whatever crush wants on the other. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know? You know. Uh, no one wants to hear from you, bruh. Yeah, your opinions are shit. That is very problematic language you just used. English isn't even my first language, but let me speak to you in my mother tongue. Man, I've released what I needed to release. You know it's impossible for me to withdraw. Ah. Listen here, honorable members. Myself and honorable lady parts demand that we respond with a smiley heart eyes and a peach emoji. I demand you stand down, honorable heart. Stand down! Listen here. We will not be held hostage by this kangaroo court. But you see, honorable chair, they are leaving common sense behind once again. And I must find it that I prefer tomorrow. As we have not reached consensus on the matter, Honorable Heart and Honorable Vagina have taken the lead. Let's go, let's go! Uh, common sense will be muted for the rest of the evening. We are adjourned. Thank you! Many people ask me, Lindy, as a card-carrying feminist, do you believe that men are trash? Of course I do, but it's not only that men are trash. I believe that men are not properly occupied. They need to do things that are more in line with their physiology, like building a house or saving a kitten from a tree. As you can see from this graph, the way men are growing, their horniness and ego levels are just getting higher, but the intelligent levels are staying on the ground. That's your problem. You're welcome. Our next comedian is Kurt Squirnard, the owner of Cape Town Comedy Club. The only business more useless would be an alcohol brand during lockdown. Thank you for hiring me, Savannah. I've recently joined a gym. Yeah, and I can see by my body language that it's... Uh, <clears throat> Boop one, Kurt zero, so I thought, hey, you know, let's, uh, let's sign up to, to something a little more constructive than just a good diet. So I went to the gym, and I mean, when I say I go to the gym, I mean, I actually go, I don't just walk through the turnstile and swipe my card, and then go back out again, for the points. No, 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 I actually go to the gym. And I don't know if you noticed, there's just that music in the gym. Eh? Every gym in the world has that music. You know which music I'm talking about, you know? dance music all the time, It'll keep you going like this. Because if you played Celine Dion, fucking fall asleep, right? So like, they have that energy going all the time. Let's, let's start off with the smell in the gym, okay? We need to approach this now. There's a smell in, if, no matter where you are in the world, there's the same smell in the gym. It's like a combination of unwashed ass, knickknacks and chlorine, you know? Makes your face, your face go like that. And I don't know about the people that work out in the gym as well. There's a certain kind of person yeah. that works out in the gym. Let me check, they use language like me and you, normal people like yeah. us, we don't understand. I was there the other day and a guy chewed me, ah, oh, bro, will you spot me, eh? Spot me. I was like, yeah, I sp spotted you when you came in the door, bro. What you mean? And then there's that instructor as well. The instructor that is from Benoni, but sounds like Arnold because they've got bigger muscles than normal. You know the guy. And that one big bouncing vein at the side of his neck that's just not Christian, you know what I mean? I'm just saying. And um, 
I don't know if the rest of you feel the same way I do about the gym, but it's a very intimidating place for normal people. I don't fit in comfortably. I don't like the music they play there. But you can't choose the music at the water bar. They don't like that, you know? So I just don't like the vibe. And then they work out in, like I said, in little groups, and then there's that instructor, and I swear the guy that helped me out the last time was making up names of muscles, bro. Yeah, I promise, he says, uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to help you work on your apozoids, your trapezoids, and your backozoids. <laughs> and I was like, I'm fucking sure there's no such zoids, bro. I work as zoids, I'm just saying. So I started out and I worked out. I was to try the spinning class, if you ex spinning class. For those of you who haven't been, let me explain it to you. It's like a class full of bicycles, like an Oscar Pistorius bicycle. Is it too soon to talk about him like that? No, fuck it, he's in jail for a long time. That's safe, no? It's like, it's, it's missing the back wheel. And you check, they put you on this bicycle that goes nowhere. You cycle your gravel off, my bro. You don't move. And they put all kinds of goodness on you to check your heart rate and stuff. And, and if you check, there's always this certain kind of woman that runs a class like that. You know that type? Perfect princess type with the tightest bum you've ever seen in your life. And she's working that bicycle like it's an ex-husband's credit card, my bruce. And the whole class is going like that, off the bicycle, off the saddle, back down on the saddle, off the saddle, back down on the saddle. Have you checked that? Have you seen that spinning class? Off the saddle, back down on the saddle, off the saddle, back down on the saddle. I'm like, all right, cool, so I'm in there too. I'm in the saddle, off the saddle, back in the saddle. Like, this is going on for about 15 minutes. 15 minutes of this. I am sweating like Julius Malema at the woodwork exam. I'm hoing it. I am cycling my thing off. Do you know what this goose says? 15 minutes into it. Okay, now that we're done with the warm up. Warm up? I'm thinking, lady, I got a lung hanging out my head here. What do you mean, warm up? Man, the whole class is still going like that. And they got other things at the gym as well. They've got yoga at the gym. Now, I don't know if you've been to the yoga class. The, the whole gym has always got that same kind of music I mentioned all the time. Except for the yoga class. Except there. Over there, they've got the sounds of whales pumping. Have you heard? Somewhere in the bay, there's a way to go, eh? Whales pumping. All right. And they all have accents like that. All right. Welcome to yoga. I'm like, are we over here? All right, welcome to Yoga 101. It's so nice to have you in the class. And then they use words that normal people like me and you don't understand, eh? They go, all right, everybody find your central chakra. Huh? Mm. I'm like, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot my chakra at home today. Can I, can I borrow a chakra from somebody? Anybody. Just chakra? No. Before I go any further, I also need to point out that us, uh, us colored people are a little different. I don't know if you noticed. Yeah. Um, do you know that we are the next step in evolution? That's right, bro. Human 2.0. Soon enough, in the next hundred years, the whole world's gonna be colored blue. Yeah, people will meet and they'll make colored people all over the world. And there's a couple of things you gotta look out for, colored people. If you noticed, in this human 2.0, there's one small little flaw. We, we're born without one kneecap. Have you checked that? There's always a walk like this. Because there's no kneecap on the one side. I'm just saying, all right, so there we are. Do you know that they have a virgin active in Mitchell's plane as well? <laughs> Don't judge, bro, they do. I was there the other day uh, for a meeting, long story, as one does in Mitchell's plane, and I managed to observe a um, aqua aerobics class that was going down. You guys into aqua aerobics? Don't worry, me neither. And uh, <clears throat> I was watching an aqua aerobics class go down there, and there was like, 48 colored chicks in a pool. 
Now, I've got something to say about that. I've got a statement to make about that. Shower caps are not swimming caps. Eh? They're not the same thing, my boo. There was like 47 shower caps and one shop right chicka's bag right, right at the back there. In fact, the instructor was from Bredasdorp in the Western Cape. That's right, because there was a bray on every R. It's one, two, three, and stretch and breathe and stretch and breathe. One, two, three. I said, can we please buy this brown R? I will save some money and I'll give him an R. And you know that they've got a machine there at the Virgin Active in Mitchell's plane. They've got a machine exclusively for colored people. Jenin, you, you turn it on and the one side goes faster than the other. It's called a roll machine. Well, that's all my time. I've been Kurt Skunrod and you guys have been great. It's a bit weird for me to be back at work. I haven't had this many eyes on me since I went to my cousin's christening and someone asked, what smells like weed? I've been spending a lot of time at home, which has not been fun for me because it turns out that I am in charge of taking care of that home. I found that out the hard way when my toilet was leaking and I phoned my landlord. And he said, Lindy, it's simple. Don't you have some plumber's patty lying around? And I said, sure, it's right next to my tool belt where I was building a shelf. Later, I'm gonna fix a car. Any car, I don't own one, I'm a comedian. Then he said, you know what? You should check if there's anything blocking the drain. So just unscrew the lid. Huh. And then I laughed because he said screw and I'm 12. Unscrew the lid and check if there's anything blocking the lid. Do you know what goes in the toilet? He wanted me to put my hand in that. I don't mean to be crass, but it's K-A-K. -K. And I don't believe that these hands should be near any of that. I believe I am a thinking man's woman. These hands are not meant to be in shit. These hands are meant to make shit. Then my landlord finally said something that made me believe that I'm doing it right as a brown woman. He said, if you have a spare container lying around, put it underneath the leak so it doesn't cause a flood in your bathroom. I have every single container that has ever entered my household. It has never left. Why? Because I care about the planet and also I have attachment issues. All those containers are still on my bathroom floor right now. The leak happened months ago, but I just write jokes really slowly. My name is Lindy Johnson. I can only assume you guys have had a riot of a time. Goodbye.